Uh, hello and uh, how are you? Welcome back to our second session of learning how to create mobile applications. I mean, sorry, web application at advanced level. My name is Mehino Mbark and I'm going to be a tutor as how it's all, it is always been. So let's get started with that today's business. So in the previous class, we got introduced to PHP object oriented programming. And uh, I believe uh, if you are practicing, at least now you understand what is meant by class, what is meant by object and uh, properties. And then uh, the remaining things such as methods, uh, encapsulation and the rest, we'll do them as uh, we proceed. As you know here, we're going to concentrate much more on practicals. So everything that will about uh, theory and the rest, we can always do it when we are doing what? When implementing real world examples. So with that much said, uh, today we're going to get introduced to a new te technology or we're going to get introduced to something new or a new chapter. And that is a PHP framework called Laravel. As we say that uh, in the previous lectures, we say that Laravel will help us to make a, a strong mobile app web application at a very good pace. So if you become if you become good at Laravel, you can really save save too much, too much of the time compared to programming from scratch or programming from um, using another framework. Laravel is the best framework. Uh, even though we go to trends, you will see that Laravel is really one of the popular frameworks of PHP. It's the most popular framework of PHP that you can implement as a programmer. So with that much said, uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, and start uh, the real world examples okay, of Laravel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open my browser and then uh, we're going to go through steps of installing uh, Laravel or creating a Laravel project from uh, on our heart, on our, applic on our computers. So the first thing to do to create a Laravel project, you have to install what we call a PHP Composer. PHP Composer will help us to install, uh, to install or to initialize Laravel or other PHP uh, libraries that you may want on our heart on your computer. So PHP is composers will just help us to install library. Eh? So if you have a library of PHP and you want to implement it, they are usually shared on PHP composer and then on PHP composer platform or repositories, you can use PHP composer on PHP composer repositories can use PHP composer to do what to install those uh, libraries into your computer so likewise to laravel to create a new fresh project of laravel you need a what you need a php composer and then once you have php composer you can go ahead and install that laravel what laravel project so we're going to try to go step by step to install php composer and i'm going to demo to elaborate this and i will also share a specific video that can uh, explain to you how can you install php composer so once you have PHP Composer on your computer, uh, then you'll be good to go, okay? Hello YouTube, my name is Amulli and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Composer on your Microsoft Windows. So it will work on Microsoft Windows XP, Vista 7, 8, 8.1 and 10. So to download Composer and install it on your system, launch your preferred browser. I'm going to use Firefox. And then you go to www.getcomposer.org and hit enter. So this is the Composer website. You can read more about getting started, documentation, issues, and a lot of other stuff, packages as well. And to download it, you click on download. You will see there are a lot of documentation for different there for different operating system, but for Microsoft Windows, you simply download this one. Composer setup exe and save the file. I'm using Firefox, so it will save in the downloads folder. But if you're using other browser, make sure you have saved it in a location where you can find it find easily then i'm going to open it 
I can click here or I can go to the folder and then double click from here and then you have to say yes on the prompt see the developer mode is basically a little bit advanced so if you are a beginner please do not check the box what happens for a beginner you would not be able to easily uninstall it you will have to go to C drive and then uninstall it from here if you install for developer mode in developer mode okay so I'm going to leave that box and then you click next you must have PHP installed on your system otherwise you would not be able to use the composer composer is basically a PHP you can see here dependency manager so you must have PHP installed on your computer I have XMP installed on my system. If you haven't installed any PHP, please go ahead and watch my other video where I show you how to install XMP server. That includes everything Apache, PHP, MySQL, and Perl as well. Then you have to click. Also, if you want to use a different PHP, you can you must have option. You can select that and then click next. Here you can leave it empty and this is the PHP version going to be used 7.1.9 okay and then click next sorry install. And it's done. Okay so it says you'll have to log off and log back on to use composer but that's old case you simply click next and then say finish you can read about this composer on the documentation page here I will leave the download and documentation page in the description so let me go ahead and show you how to check it so you simply open the command prompt go to menu and then type cmd or command prompt and then you say composer yeah, I'm right. Then you will get these all things here. This means your composer has been installed on your Microsoft Windows, and these are the commands that you can use with this composer. Okay, so this is how you install composer on Microsoft Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe for my channel. Also, if you want to improve if you want to speed up composer you you watch my other video how to speed up composer Thank so what i'll do i'll cut this video and add a php composer video and then uh, how to install php composer video and then you can proceed so with that much said um let me first elaborate how i can how you can install php composer so to do that just simply come to your browser and search php php composer install okay it's kind of a software but uh it's not a simple thing to install though we have gone through a lot so this php composer cannot scare us so these are these are steps of installing php composer so what you do you just come back and you just come and sit and learn how to do what how to install php composer so the first thing you have to download it okay so to download it you run this uh, command you run this command first of all you should be having php installed in your computer and then you have to run this command okay so when you run this command uh, php composer will be brought in your heart in uh, in your computer it will be installed in your computer just open the command prompt eh? terminal like this one eh? here and then you paste this command but for me i already have it so what i will do i will cut this video and between these words I'll add the video that will explain how to install PHP Composer step by step on both Windows and what and Mac. So you run this file, you just open the terminal or the command prompt and put this line php composer.php install and then to install and then after you move this uh, to your environment which is mv.php composer.user.local.bin.composer. So this is going to add uh, the composer command in your what in your environment 
uh, if you're using what if you're using Mac so that's how you install PHP composer if you're using window here are the steps uh, you download PHP composer here after downloading it then you add it in your path uh, if you're following our mobile application development uh, we demonstrated how to add uh, something in the path eh? so here I'll also show you how you can add the PHP composer to your path after install after downloading and then you have to add it to your what to your path so you have to read, read this what read this uh, documentation to install php composer another way you can simply as well come to youtube uh, as i've told you don't learn me from learn, learn from me alone just uh, search php install php composer so if you're using windows just say on windows 10 or whatever so you'll find some guys who have already made a uh, clean and short videos straightforward you see this is seven minutes this is three minutes so what you do just put your ass down and try to watch and follow this first video try 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 it if it fails try the second one learn um i can assure you cannot you cannot watch all these four videos and still fail without installing php composer but what i'll do i'll put one of the video i'll explain one of the video that shows you how to install this one this php composer I'll put in this video so you can watch it and then just proceed so once you install php composer one of these guys you see this this first video second one fourth one fifth one sixth one i can assure you cannot watch these six videos and leave without uh, we while still failing to do what to install php composer you see you just download uh, a zipped file and then you put in uh, just like what we did with with that sdk download put a a, a a zipped file of composer add it uh, in your disk c get its path go to environment of your of, of of your of your windows and then after reaching the environment paste there the path of php composer folder and then you'll be able to you'll have installed php composer in simple terms that's how we do it that's how we install php composer me already have it so you may not want to disorganize but you cannot finish more than two hours while trying to install php composer and fail once you have the concept so try these videos if mine fails try uh, that i'm going to add here if it fails try 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 if you completely fail then come to my inbox i'll help you so that's how we install php composer so how do you tell that you have successfully installed php composer you tell by simply writing the composer uh, in your command. Just when I talk about command line, at this point, you should be knowing what is meant by command line. So come to your command line and type composer like this, okay? And when you press enter, you should be able to get this Chinese, eh? These uh, words, uh, what and what. So here, composer, you see? This is what, what will comes when you have installed composer. If you don't get this, then you know that you have not successfully installed composer. Watch that video again more six times. If it fails to another video, six times, times six videos. If you really, really fail, then come to my inbox. I'll help you. But uh, I hope it will not be that much hard. And if it becomes hard, then don't give up until you, did, you let it install in your what? In your computer. So once you have successfully installed the Compose in your command, this is what you'll do. What? We'll be getting in your what? In your, in your what? In your... In, when you run when you write the word composer in uh, in your command prompt as you can see in your terminal you'll be able to get that you see just simply write the word composer then you'll be able to get that if you want to see the composer version you see it is here you can as well see minus v you'll be able to get the composer version composer minus v run that sorry composer minus v like this run that composer minus v capital v You'll be able to get uh, the composer version once you have this then you're good to go okay so we'll assume that um, at this point you will have installed composer so make sure by next class you should have installed composer so once you have once you have composer installed you'll be able to create php laravel projects so to create a php laravel project first of all you have to be sure of the destination of where you are when I talk about the destin I mean the destination or the point where you are in the command prompt or in the terminal is the folder where this where you where, where you're pointing at at this moment. So if you still remember to, to look at the folder where you're pointing at at the moment, you simply write pwd. 
PWD, I don't know what it means in full, but I know people with disabilities, <laughs> but here, here it will tell you where uh, you're pointing at that particular time. So I have to be pointing uh, either on desktop or in a specific folder where I'm going to put my project of Laravel. So to create a project, after making sure that you have a uh, co composer, then uh, you have to come to know you to, to how to create a Laravel project. So Laravel has a very great documentation on how you can create a, uh, on how it has a great documentation. All what you need is just to sit and start learning one by one. So come here and then search Laravel create project. Oh, create Laravel project command, something like that. So you see, this is the documentation or the main link, the main part of Laravel. So laravel.com is where you can find the whole documentation about Laravel. Okay. So here in Laravel page, they will try to, we'll use it so much because it is the reference of Laravel. Oh, Laravel 9, seriously, I'm still in Laravel 8. So here you'll get uh, the whole concept of how you can uh, create a Laravel project from zero. So you can see, you have to come here to laravel.com and then start following along on the installation. So almost everything that we'll learn, we'll find it here and it will be well explained in a very good English that you can sit back, uh, sit down and learn and then understand everything. So uh, scroll, read these things, read, 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 but for me, I've already read them. So I'll save your time, scroll until you reach this line. So. What are they saying here? Uh huh. So, see to example. Yeah. I'm seeing Carl, that is for Ubuntu Composer Create Project. Okay, this is, you see, installation via Composer, and this is what you want, okay? So, come installation or creating uh, the Laravel project via Composer. So, this is how you'll create a Laravel project. You just simply write Composer. So if you have Composer installed in your computer, command line, just write Composer and then write Create Project. And then you give Laravel and uh, stroke Laravel. Leave this part, I mean, leave this one. So Laravel stroke Laravel. And then if you want to specify the version of Laravel 8, just put 8.8 .8, and then the name of the what? Of the project. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'll just copy this command. So most of commands will be copying them. You do, may not even need to write them. That's why you'll need a what? You'll need uh, uh, you'll need uh, internet connection in your programming. So this is when you want to use a what? You use you want to use a uh, the installer. So let's go ahead and uh, in case you have installed the Laravel command, Laravel also has a command. You can also use this one to create a Laravel project. So I'm going to use Composer to create a Laravel project. So I'll copy that. So I've opened my terminal or my command prompt. When I open the command prompt, everybody should be understanding what I'm talking about. Let me open my text editor here and then maybe create some new file here. I always like to first like to put my command somewhere and make sure I clean it before I run it. So this is my command that I've just copied from Laravel. So before I run it, I must first make sure it is okay. So it's going to be otherwise if you run a command without uh, making it properly, you may end up writing, making wrong things and then uh, you it takes you time to go back. So you see, I write composer, create project. Uh, so which project are we going to begin with? Um, okay, most of the projects always begin with um, a blog post, or just make a blog website or a blog uh, website. Then when you proceed, you can make an e-commerce and the rest. So going to be composer, create project, then write Laravel, stroke Laravel, can remove this app thing. That app thing, it will help us to, uh, this, this thing, this thing that is painting on top, remove it, uh, keep it Laravel dot, I mean, colon 8.0. Why we need to remain on 8.0? Laravel 8, I don't know it how it, uh, it has come. We are still on 8. Eh? So after, you give the name of your project. So I'm going to give the name of my project, blog, okay? I'm going to give it a name, blog. So it means that you're saying composer should create project of Laravel 8 
and should name that project what blog so after making sure that my command is clean then i can go ahead and run it okay so let me go back to our command prompt or the terminal uh i write make sure that i'm in right folder pwd that is where i am so let me list all the items in uh, this folder ls list items so you can see so i want to go to desktop okay i want to go to desktop so i'll just simply say cd desktop there i am uh, i can first say ls you can see all the folders are on desktop a lot of stuff so i, I want to create uh, a folder called laravel and in this folder of laravel it's where i'll put uh, my project okay so for you can organize in a different way but for me i'm going to do like that so to create folder uh in command prompt if you don't want to come and maybe click right click create folder another way you can simply say mk dir make da or make directory mk dir and then give a folder name so i'm going to give this folder laravel okay so you can see if i come now here to my desktop i should be able to see a new folder called laravel you can see this is the folder that i've just created through the command prompt okay so i'm going to move into that folder so to move into the folder it is cd and then the name of the folder you see there it is so if i say ls list items in this li in this folder it should be empty there is nothing there so I've j i'm just now in this folder this one that i've just created this one so if i say pwd okay if i say pwd i should be able to see that i'm in this folder so it should be in the folder that you know before you create a what the, the command or if, before you run the command of creating the laravel project so to do that i'm going now to run this command that i've just written and cleaned i'm going to cre create a project called what called blog so uh let me just give a special name eblog so that it should not sound very funny <laughs> okay let me create like a project called eugenius 24 that's it be a new project okay eugenius 24 so after doing that let's go ahead and run this command now that's going to create for us a project of laravel so i'll paste it there press enter ah and you sit back uh oh there's a problem uh what they say could not find package laravel with uh, version 8 okay let me remove this let me allow them to do anything for me so i'm just going to run it as it is copy i removed the version eh? i did not specify the version run nope it's gonna work boom so to start oh laravel 9 oh my god i don't know laravel 9 but i hope it's not that much different let's face it I last did Laravel 8, but there is Laravel 9. So Laravel will always keep on updating. But updating the doesn't change much of your project structure. So it will uh, create for me the project. So what you do, you just sit back and then wait. So it has finished um, creating what? Laravel project. So if you come back to your folder now, you should be able to see there something. Can you see? They have created for me a folder called Eugenius24. And I can see there's some Chinese. I hope this is Laravel 9. But I'm going to face it anyway. I'm a programmer, so I'm going to face it. So you'll see they have created for you a project. And it's there. So, but you're not in this. Pro you're in the command line. You're not in this project yet. Okay. So if I do ls. List items, you see. There is Eugenius24. So I'm going to navigate and enter in this project. So in that project is going to be ls and the name of the folder which is using 24 press enter now you can see ah uh, sorry cd eugene is 24 cd eugene is 24 so you can see i'm now in that folder cls i mean sorry command okay then now let us write ls so i'm in the folder of uh, the project i've just created okay so in this folder that's where i am if you want to open it this folder in uh, vs code just write the word code and the full stop it will be able to install to, to open this folder in vs code if you cannot do that there is just one small thing that you have to search on internet search install code then full stop or you can say install code then full stop 
search that one if you search it you will see how you can make use of this command this command it opens the point where we are right now in our heart in a vs code so just write code and a full stop then press enter it's going to launch vs code for me with this folder loaded you see it's beautiful you see my folder has been opened eh? in vs code <laughs> but that's not the only way to go that's not the only way if you don't want to do that still you can open a, a folder in like a normal way come to file come to open folder come to um desktop come to laravel uh oh didn't mean that uh come to file open folder desktop laravel then the name of your project you see it is here double click on it i don't save don't save i don't need it so double click on it you see your folder loaded into your what into your project there we are but another way another beautiful way of doing that just write the word code and full stop if this cannot work just search install code dot code full stop it's just a very small thing that you have to do and then you'll be able to launch vs code like this so that's it so you can see my folder has been opened uh, in vs code so there's a lot of things that uh, we'll discuss here that we'll look at the one that you'll understand the one that we'll ignore that we don't understand but in simple terms this is a laravel project and that's how it looks like it's beautiful right so now the next thing is to run it okay is to run it you can either run it from vs code or you can run it from uh the terminal here okay so if i want to run it from vs code vs code terminal if i want to serve this project from vs code terminal so what i do i can just simply come here to terminal and then click on new terminal and then i can run it from here i can run it from here okay i can run it from here this is the same as this one so you can either run it from this terminal after navigating to this folder and then you run or come here and then run it from this terminal one of the two it will work so where should i run it from i think i should run it from here anywhere it will work okay so if i want to run this project to be able to start playing with it just make sure that you're in the folder of where your project is okay as you can see if i write ls i can see uh, that i'm in this folder if i write pwd i can see i'm in the folder of the project that i want then to start serving this project because if you don't run it then it will not work or to serve it eh? we call it serving you read this piece of line it's called uh, you can find it actually uh in laravel see it is here php artisan serve php artisan serve so php artisan serve will uh, serve or will create a server for your heart for your project temporary one so i'll clean it right php these few things small small lines will start memorizing them eh? right now they can look like chinese but we'll understand them later php artisan serve so this one is going to serve or create a server for our project temporarily then i press enter so to process and then when you get this green line with this word then you know that everything is beautiful your project has been successfully created and uh, initialized and running so what i will do is to open uh, this project okay in the browser so if you want to open another uh, this project in the browser you can press control and hold and then click on this link or you can simply copy this link as it is here okay copy this link as it is it is 170.0.1.1 then colon 800 put 800 so copy that and then come to your browser this is my browser you see and then i'm going to paste that link there so if i paste that link i should be able to get that do you see that i should be able to get that so when you when you get that successfully then you know that you have uh, successfully created your first uh, web application of laravel that is the most complicated part that uh, most people always give up on laravel before they reach there they find it hard to install the composer to configure the composer and then uh, create running these commands and of course when you don't when you're teaching yourself it can be a little bit complicated but if you have a path someone who shows you path 
mm, it will not be that much hard okay so by doing like that if i want to stop serving this way if i can refresh i can see this stuff if i want to start serving it just press ctrl and c here come to command press ctrl c so if i come and refresh here you can see it's going to bring that this site is not existing so let me go ahead and run it again so it has started serving if i come and refresh everything is beautiful and we can see that we have successfully created our project of php laravel 9 not five not eight but nine i've never dealt with eight i'm not lying you but i believe it's not that much different from i've i mean i've never dealt with laravel nine i'll not lie you but i believe it's not that much different from laravel eight so at this point make sure that you will reach this point don't give up before you reach this point okay so I've, after reaching that point it means that you have uh, you have created your what your first project of laravel so we can proceed so now let us first look at the files that have been created in our project here they are okay let me zoom can i zoom yes so these are the files that were created for us by just simply running a php uh composer command of initializing the laravel project so we may understand uh basics of these files but we are going to just look at the structure but as we proceed, we will really, really understand. But uh, for now, you don't need to understand exactly, exactly like what is meant by every folder here. But uh, you need just to know the structure. And then when you proceed, when you become a pro, you will understand, of course, everything here. So you have the app. Here in the app, it is where we'll be putting our what? The brain or the logic of our what? Of our, of our project. So writing functions. Uh, writing classes of our models they will be here the what inside the app so the whole logic of our project the, the, the real logic it will be inside the app here we have http this is where we'll be managing uh the links of the what inside our project for example the routers the controllers i may speak something that may fa sound funny at this time but when you proceed you'll understand what i mean so the routers and the controllers they will be managed here under what here under http the middlewares we look at middlewares as we proceed but they'll manage here under http then models this will be our classes that we'll be using and then uh, we have providers we we'll look at them also so the whole logic of application will be inside this uh app okay then you have bootstrap so bootstrap uh this is the file that will be called uh, by laravel itself to start the what start the application we have php composer i mean the composer file this is the composer uh, file for php that will be managing the libraries or any external thing that will be adding in our project then you have this config part uh this configuration part it is will be configuring our project changing the name of our project changing the logo changing uh the the database information will be inside this config you see even this database.php all that stuff they are managing emails and the rest will be uploading files uploaded files will be here under php config okay so it will be in P i mean sorry in this config folder then database here will have what we call factories of our database we'll have the migrations uh, a place that will be here so much uh it migrate application they'll be here so this one is where we'll be dealing with the database and communication to the database cedars they'll also be here uh, right now they can sound funny but as we proceed you'll understand everything okay so don't worry about uh, uh the new terms that you we are talking about right now lang this is where we'll be putting languages in case we want to translate our application Laravel gives us ability to have multilingual projects. So if in case you want to translate this language to your local language like Mandinga in the Gambia, you can uh, write here a file, a, folder, a file called Mandinga and then every word inside your project to you give it a, another word or a local word in your local language. So someone can be able to switch between languages. 
So those language logic can come here under uh, English. Is Mandinga. Um, so <laughs> not Mandinga. <laughs> Madinka, eh? I don't know. <laughs> okay, for me, I call it Mandinga, whatever. So, Hadi, I hope you're fine there. I am fine. Okay, thank you for following. So, I was saying that you can put here local languages in quest one to translate the language uh, you can put here so here under resources it is where we'll be putting our CSS files our bootstrap file and the rest will come here under resources JS it's where we'll put our JavaScript in case we want to deal with JavaScript so the JavaScript will come always come here under resources <laughs> then uh, we have the views now here views is where we're going to look at something new called PHP blade so PHP Blade is the be beautiful way of mixing your PHP with the uh, HTML. So our views, what the users will be seeing, they'll be coming here under views. Then you have routes. So routes is where we'll be managing uh, the web routes or the web links with the what? With the API. So these routes will work with the what? With the controller that we saw up here under app under HTTP. So these web routes, they'll be working with the word, with controller, to control how uh, our website should be navigated through. Then we have storage. So here in storage, it's where we'll be putting the files that are uploaded to the what? To the system. Then we have uh, tests. We use that one when you're testing the application, unit testing and the rest. Then we have the vendor. So here in the vendor, it's where we'll have uh, folders that are uh, for, for external libraries. For example, you see library is a framework. So we'll have other external libraries that we can use to support it. For example, you want to include the maps into your system. Now, map is not coming with Laravel, but they will find an external folder of Google Maps. So you, you can include it here. In, and that folder will come here in this vendor, just as it sounds, vendors. Eh? So other external folders, other external uh external what external um external libraries that will support our application will come here under under vendors so with that said let's go ahead and now start uh, biting uh small bites on our heart on a laravel project okay so once you have that it means that you have done something beautiful and it can run then that will be really great Okay, so that's our first project of Laravel. Okay, so the question is now, where are we starting from? You have launched your Laravel project there in um, in your uh, in your text editor, as you can see. So the things that we just explained, all of them, they are here collapsed in what in uh, in VS Code. So once you have it there, so we can begin now. See how we uh, we get started. Even me, I don't know where to get started from. We begin with routing. Yeah, because routing is the heart of the project. So before we come, let us begin with routing. So as we said that uh, in Laravel, all uh, all the links that are in the Laravel, they'll be mapped in a, a place called la route. I'll supply notes this. I will have to supply notes that you can read and then understand very well. So the routes is the one that is going to control the whole project, the whole project. As you can see here, this link is registered somewhere in what? In Laravel, so that you can execute this one. So inside the routes, uh, it's where we'll be controlling the links of the whole project. For example, if, if I put here stroke about, about. So what is done, you see this link is not found. Why? Because I've not put the about part. Or we have not created that about route. So this li this link of stroke about it is first looked it is it is if it is first searched inside the laravel I, I mean inside the routes and if it is not found it will not do what it will show you that this link was not found so if i go back to the main one the stroke one you'll be able to see this so the question is now where do you find the routes the routes we find them here you come to your main application you'll find a folder called routes here. So you click on the routes, you have three routes. Um, there are now four. 
there are three there's supposed to be two i mean there are supposed to be two main ones eh? ignore this one these are just new things that have been added but the two main ones we have the api route and the web route so here it's so when we start creating the api we'll be putting the logic of the api here now here in the web route it is where you have the web routing okay the website okay the public website so you can find i've put for you comments that are trying to explain something here i can remove that comment it's not important but you can read it eh? they say here is where you register your web routes for application these routes uh loaded into the route provider with group whatever whatever etc so i'm going to delete this one so this is where we put the route so you can see our first route is already registered there okay it is route and then you put uh these specifiers these two columns and then you say get and then put a forward slash so this first one is the name of a route here okay the name of a route then you like this function and then you open open and close it and then you open curl bracket here and then you pass you return what you want to be displayed on the screen so you can see here i'm returning view and then the word welcome so but we are not seeing this word welcome in the screen when we load and refresh you see this is the default route the one with the forward slow forward slash it's the default route so it means if i come and refresh we'll be loading that default route and we're seeing that so at this time you may not understand uh this why we are saying this word uh or why we're seeing this so but what happens this is what being executed so let me go ahead and remove this i'm going to return remove let me comment that let me remove that one and i'm going to return welcome to home and then put semicolon so whatever i return here is what's going to be displayed on screen so if i save i'll be able to see welcome home can you see that welcome home so the question is now if we have so it means that we have our first route okay i can just simply say this is home okay so if i refresh welcome welcome home so it means that now if you want to add another route uh, maybe the about us route you see when you try to search the about when i put here stroke about we did not see anything why because this about route is not registered so let's go ahead and register the about us route so i can just simply copy the same thing run into stress life paste it there so just simply put stroke here about okay stroke about so what i'm going to return here about us page so about us page. So if you come and refresh you can see remove the stroke i think not not the stroke so come and refresh uh -oh. about oh i wrote the wrong spelling sorry stroke about refresh you see about us page so that's how we route and that what makes people to run away from laravel but is it hard it's not really hard can you see we have about us i mean you have about us. so if i want to create the contact us just duplicate that one and write contact second so put contact us page so everything is organized we have all the rest so if i come here stroke i put stroke contact i will sorry write wrong spelling contact can you see contact us page if i remove everything i'm on the home page so everything will be have will be able to control it all of it in one place okay so every link in your project you'll be able to do what uh, to have it in your hands you can control it which is really really what really beautiful so now another thing now you remember the first page that we had in our home page where did it come from so laravel has uh, a model called i mean it follows the model called mvc it has a model called m it follows a model of programming of organizing the content or architecture called mvc whereby m stands for what 
for model model and then we have v stands for view and c stands for controller okay so what do these ones mean it means that we can separate the logics the logic of our project into three whereby m is going to be the model those will be the classes you remember the classes of our object if you have the product will be in a, in a, in a specific class product if you have a customer you'll have a, a specific class called, called customer so all the logics about the product will be under the product model and that will be plain php code all the logic about the product will be under the product model so that's why that's how it's separated the code into the m m uh, called model then you have the v we call it view so this view is what the user will see and this will be only html with just small pieces of what of php so all the logic will be done here and then being displayed here in what in v what we call view then controller this will be now the routes and uh, the, the 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 management of the links in the what in the entire project so this will control these others this view so all our code will be matching between these three main main what main models uh, or main main category main 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 sections of what of uh, our project m v c so this one will help us to not repeat ourselves when you're writing code you can write a code for a certain project and when you go to another project you just simply copy that code why because you will not mix your php code inside the model with what with the html code which is really really powerful so now you saw here we had the word view so a view the view function inside the laravel it will help us to load the view or the html part so the html part or the view it will be found here come to folders and then come to to resources then come to views so you can see views and you see we have something called welcome.blade.php so you see that's what we were seeing on the screen at the beginning okay you see so here you can write your html totally separate separate from where from your php so you can write whatever like html like your html will just be calling only the small parts of php okay so you'll separate your content from php so if i want to create another view let us create another view just simply come here new file i'm going to call it home so after putting home you put dot blade so why do you put blade this blade is the technology that enables us to mix html with what with php so dot blade dot php like this so you have to install maybe one more uh, uh plugin i mean one more extension that will help you to organize your blade code by simply coming here extensions and then search for blade right here blade okay so when you write blade uh you'll be able to get this extension install this first extension these two this one blade snippets and blade formatter these two they will be really important they will help you to keep your code organized this one uh blade snippets 1 million point seven then we have this one blade formatter uh three millions uh, downloads just install these two these two they'll be enough for you There's this laravel blade i don't install it but i'm okay so i don't think you need it just install this two you'll be good so now we come back you see um i know i'm a bit fast but let me try to be slow so this home blade i've just created it in this view so here i can write my normal html okay html five and i can say i can write even home and i can write here um maybe my home maybe h1 home page so i can write here freely but within here still i can perform some powerful operation of php for example if i want to display something from php i just simply put those two brackets 
and I'll be able to do something. For example, I can say A, I mean 11 plus 22. This one will perform for me a PHP logic. So I can simply uh, do some PHP things within uh, these powerful uh, double brackets that will come to. Don't worry about them. Let me first remove them. But here, can approve, I can assure you that's the best way of doing things. So I have this view called home.blade.php. That view called home.blade.php. Then I have uh, now I'm going to go back to controller and load this view. You see, we had this one of Laravel. Let's just go ahead and load ours. So to load ours, I'll just simply come to uh, to the web route, web route of web. And then instead of returning welcome to home, I'm going to return the view. So if I want to return the view, just simply write view and then bracket and then double. And then you put name of your view. So if that view is having the name blade, I mean the name and then the dot blade dot PHP, like the way it is here, you may not need to read the whole thing, just simply write home. So Laravel will do the logic of coming and pick this file called home here and said view folder and load it into your heart and do the project. So come and refresh. You can see home page. And this is coming from what? From our view folder. This is coming from our view folder. So that is how we do what? Uh, we create uh, the, Laravel, the Laravel project and that's how we uh, add that Laravel project in our heart in our project. And that's how we add the view. Uh, so in the next class, I'll make sure that uh, I teach you uh, GitHub so that every code that will be uh, creating the task that I'll be giving you, you'll be sharing them through GitHub. So that will be the work of next class. But here, I'll keep it simple. We'll keep it Laravel. Okay. Then the next class, I'll show you how you can use GitHub to manage your projects, also to collaborate with other people. So in the next class, make sure that... Uh, you reach this point of creating Laravel project, then we'll learn another thing, GitHub. If you don't know GitHub, then you'll learn it. If you know it, well and good. And then uh, everything that we'll be doing, you'll be just adding me to your repositories and I can go ahead and trace your code uh, from this side. So that's how we create a view and that's how we create a route. So a route is a link. So if I come here and click maybe about, trying to be slow, see? This about is HTML, I mean, it's just a normal string. So if I want to write to HTML for it, I'll just simply come to view, right click and create a new file. I'm going to call it about dot blade dot PHP. There we go. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and put here HTML, uh, HTML5, and then come and put here about. And I can put in maybe H1 and say about from from where from view view file save. Uh, so let us now load it in our router. So to load it in the route, I'll just simply come to to where where are the routes the routes are here. Come to web route and then change here where there is about. I'm going to remove this go down string and put view and open bracket and put dots and paste there quotes <laughs> you call them dots quotes and then put about view so what's going to happen it's going to load the view folder in i mean the view file here so if you come and refresh and then go to about you see about from view file okay so the whole logic that is running behind that's not our business as long as it can do our stuff efficiently we proceed uh, that's a uh, simple information about what about routes a simple introduction about web routes so we proceed uh, to what we call controllers no, controllers will come later okay now I proceed to to route segments eh? Uh -huh. So, let us go ahead and look at uh, 
route parameters. So route parameters, mm, I don't want to confuse here, named routes. Okay. Let us proceed to controllers, okay? Uh, controllers, uh, they will help us to do the logic or to do to perform some logic of what of uh, a certain route before we let it go or uh, before we display it so for example you don't want to you want to first perform some logic assume that this person has just come here and want to see a list of users okay or a list of users so before this person list sees the list of users we have to get that list from database make sure it is okay we have organized the data properly and then we have to display that list to this to this person so what we'll display is the what is the html okay but in laravel as we discussed it is an mvc architecture model view controller so you cannot write php or the logic of whole php you can but it's not good it's not advisable to write the logic of whole php inside what inside the html so what do, what do we need? We need another thing that is going to act between the controllers. I mean the, the routes here that we are creating. In fact, you can even put this route in one line. You can even put it in one line like this. So we have to, to create something that is going to act between the route and the what and the view. So before we display a view, we should be able to perform some logic. So where do we put that logic? You put that logic in what we call controllers. So a controller will do the whole logic and then after the logic, it will load the what? It will load the view. As we have been doing them here, as so how you can see here, you see, as I've been doing them here, right now it is uh, not advisable. Uh, oh, it is when you're using just plain HTML, but we are going to create per application that are going to perform logic. So where would you write your logic? Would you write your logic here? No then we'll have lost it. Why? Because this file, its use is to direct, to redirect our project. It sounds routing. It is showing this should go here, this one should go there. That's how it says. It is routing. It is, it is showing us the path. It handles the path. So where would you write your logic? Will you write it in views? No, you cannot write your logic here in, inside this HTML. Let me show you. You should not write your logic here inside this HTML, okay? So, where will you write your logic before you display this HTML file? That logic, you write it in something called what? Called controller. So, a controller will act between this route and the view. So, the controller should be called first. And then after being called, you do the whole logic inside that controller. And then after doing, then you can load the view. But you can do like this in case that file that you want to load does not have what does not have the logic that is required to be worked upon behind the scenes so let us go ahead and uh, see how we can create controller and that's going to be the last topic of what of our today's lecture so to create a laravel controller you now need to run another command just come here reduce the text and then search for what you call controller control f controller you can even search it from google laravel controllers or you can browse here and you can find it laravel controller and then the very first search result you'll find uh, enough demonstration and instruction about controller so they'll define here what is meant by controller instead of defining all your requests handling logic as closure in your routes file instead of of defining all the logic here or all the logic of handling the request here mm -hmm, you may wish to organize your behavior or your project i mean your logic inside the what inside the controller classes so the control is where we write the what and write the logic so come and read more about these things here so this is how a controller will look like and then to create a controller you'll have to run a certain command and it is here but you can as well make it by yourself but this is how you write a what a command of a controller so we're going to write our command for home controller and then after uh, writing the command of home controller we'll see how we can implement it and that will be
the end of today's what of the end of today's project so let's go ahead and uh, create our controller so i'll first come here and you can you have seen the what the command it is here okay but i'm going to first do what to clean it i'm going to first clean it before i run it okay paste the command there somewhere in the ed editor so it's going to be php artisan make controller then in fact what i always do i always create a temporary file here, just a plain text file here in my project you see on top of the project come and create a text file just a simple text file new file call it important command dot txt just put it there so when you want to create another controller don't need again to go and copy it and search it just put it there so to create a controller so you'll be saving these commands here important commands so you can come back and copy them eh? so to create a controller this is how you create it you just simply write php artisan make controller like this okay and then you write the name of the what of the controller so i'm going to create a home controller so to create a home controller you just write capital letter h and in camo case eh? begin with h we call it snake case or camo case i don't know home and then controller this is camo case eh? controller like that then put dot php i uh, no, no, not dot php <laughs> just write home controller so after writing this command you have to run it okay you have to run it so by writing this command it will create for us the controller so people run from ph from laravel because they fear these commands so let us go ahead and run that controller the home controller that's going to be managing the home logic so to do that you expand your terminal there we go make sure that you're in the folder that you've run so pwd you're in a folder you see i'm in a huge new 24 folder i make sure that I, I make sure that i'm in a folder of my project then i run the command that i've just uh, created this one eh? php artisan make controller and then i write the controller name home controller okay so let me go ahead and run this so to run it i'll just simply paste there and press enter to process controller was created successfully if i run it again it will bring me on a warning that the controller is ready what would exist let us go ahead and see where that controller has been created so i'll just simply come here to home and then come to uh h to application and come to http so you can see controller folder is here so click on controller you can see the home controller has been created did you see that home controller has been created okay so that is how we create a what a controller so once you have a controller it means that the logic about the home page about the anything about us everything you can always write it here okay so now we have to connect this controller with the route we have to connect that controller that we just created with the route and then that controller that we connect here with the route is the one that will connect us with the what with the view after i've written all the what all the logic so let's go ahead and do that so to connect the controller with the route you simply do it like this you see this is how we do it i'll explain here so you see here we are accessing the routes directly now we want to create to first access the controller and then access the what the, the home because we may need to do some logic write some php right so instead let me comment this one so instead of doing right route like this you're going to do a route like this route gate then you put the name of the route which is the default route the stroke so you put the name of the controller the name of our controller is called user controller i mean sorry home controller home controller so if you have installed those plugins eh, those extensions they will help you to import these uh, 
files automatically so i'll just click on home controller you'll have this one and this one okay our time is up but uh, let me finish this just in one minute so i've put here controller and then you put that colon and then class here and make sure that this line has been written here okay it has been important imported then after doing that you'll have to put comma and then the name of your what the name of your uh, method so this is a class you see this class we can put there so many methods or so many functions this class of controller now you have to specify here the the, the method that you're calling or the diff the, the main part that you're calling okay so i'm going to create here a method called index okay i'm going to create here a method called index so i'm going to simply come and say function And going to call it index and I'm going to open here bracket and then maybe here return this is my home in controller save that okay so I'm going to call this method by default I'm going to call this index method inside inside the web inside the router so instead of putting show i'm going to change it to index so what will happen when someone will come to our home page the relevant route will load home controller and then controller class and then call the method called index because here you can put as many methods as you want even the about us page you can even put it here okay and then do the logic of about us page here so it is going to call this default method okay so that's what's going to happen. So instead of returning the view directly, we are going to call this PHP controller file. So here on top here, we can do anything that we want, the logic. And then after we'll load the HTML that we're going to see how it will be done. So I hope you are together. You see, I'm just loading a controller instead of loading the home view. Let's go ahead and refresh and we see if we can get the same thing. So I'll come to the home page. Beautiful. Can you see? This is my home my home in controller so what does it mean we have successfully loaded this part okay so now after this part now it, we don't print things from here or we don't display these things from here we display things from view so i'm going to call the view instead of calling this one here so you know the view that we created for the home page which is going to be so you first pass the word view and then you open bracket and put the call back and put the name of the view you remember the view that we created which is what which is home view this one eh? so i'm going to put here home okay so when i put home come and refresh so you see we have successfully done that our route let me come again our route the default route was called the route called the controller the method of view inside the I mean, the method of index in the controller and then the index called our what our home view so that's how things are supposed to be done in a normal way so up here is where we're going to write the whole logic of php here 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 and then after processing that logic for example we have maybe someone was trying to access the his home page and we want to first maybe check if he has logged in after doing what we do all that thing from here after doing maybe have now the data that we want to pass to the view will pass that data to this from here okay so after doing the whole logic of php you see how we separate our code so this will be only php no html here don't do that scene of writing html here so it write all our, our logic of php from here and then we pass the data i will show you how to pass that data we'll pass it here then that the view that we are calling this one this home view in the next class i'll show you how you can receive the data that has come from this side to here so the only part of this part of this view it will be just to display it will be just to do what to display so what does it mean it means that you can reuse your code why because you do not mix your html with the code so at this point if you can reach this point and if you understood you will have will be good to get started and that's what i advise you do your best to see at least by the next class you at this point 
by next class which may be in the weekend or next week at least make sure that you're at this point because the next class you're going now to start real coding read the notes i'm going to show you the notes read the notes read from the web learn from other teachers and make sure that you're on the same page with me so with that said i uh, will end our today's class from there and uh, i'll share the video and also maybe some notes if